In this video, I'm going to show you several different ways to add saturation to your photos in Darktable. Uh, this was a photo I was taking at the zoo uh, a while back. Um, now, I definitely don't usually take these kind of photos. I'm usually more taking portraits um, or covering events and so on. Um, so this may not be the um, most amazing image. Uh, if you're out there and you shoot insects, I'm, I'm sure you're doing a better job than me. Um, I didn't have a macro lens or anything. Um, but I've made some edits and I've got to the point where I want to increase the saturation a little bit. Now I think the most common uh, module that people use, or at least my guess is, is in the basic group. And right at the top, you have this module here, contrast, brightness, and saturation. Now you could come into the saturation and you could just click and drag that slider until you got to the point that you wanted and maybe you can do a quick here's before, here's after and you can see it's increased the saturation a lot. Um, now if this works for you, great, you know that's maybe all you need to use. Um, for me I like to maybe fine tune a little bit and look at a few of the other options. So I'm just going to reset this, uh, turn it off and I also don't really come into this module much at all because I don't use the brightness slider and if I'm going to add contrast, I actually do that up in the tone group, uh, not at that module. But moving on to the color group, I'm going to open up the module here called Color Correction. Now you can do a lot of different things in Color Correction. You actually have these little dots to interact with, like I could click and drag it to uh, add some blue to the image, or you could do some funky split toning, make it look like something on Instagram. Um, but that's not what I'm going to use this module for here. Um, if you look down at the bottom, uh, you do have a saturation slider here. And just like before, you could click and drag or you could type in a number, um, however you want to interact with it, add your saturation. Now the way I like to do it actually, I'm, I'm just going to reset it. Um, I think most people aren't aware, but if you actually just hover your mouse over this any, anywhere in the um, colored squares here, and just move your mouse wheel up or down, you're going to start increasing the saturation by 0.1. So if you look down there, you can see it going down 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 and so on. So I'd come in, I'd hover, I'd move my mouse, and then I'd right click on it and I'd just come down to the slider and just slightly tweak it until I get that exact spot that I wanted at. So here's before, or here's before, here's after. That's just my personal preference. I like this module a lot for adding saturation and fine tuning things. I'm just going to zoom out here and I'll move on to my next image. Now the big difference here, uh, this is a portrait and we have to worry about skin tones. So I'm going to actually just zoom in a little bit and you can see uh, I'm working with this model outside and we got this background that's got some red and some yellow in it and we've got some nice yellow in the foreground there too. So if I go into my color correction module and I start hovering my mouse over and moving my mouse wheel up, well I'll get to this point, I think that's a bit much, I'll, I'll, I'll bring it down. Um, but let's say I start about here, let's say I really like what it's done with the, the background and the foreground and I like her too but as you can see the face is actually quite red. I'm just going to go here's a before and here's an after. So I'm not crazy about those skin tones. So what I'd actually do at this point, because I'm already in the color group, I'd actually just go down to color zones and on the presets I'm just going to choose natural skin tones and if you look at her face you can see it's gotten rid of that. I'll just go uh, here's before, here's after and it's cleared out some of that red. I know of course that's affected the entire image and I can mask it to the face if I wanted to limit it to that. Well that's not bad. If I just look at uh, here's what the image looked like before I opened it, here's after. Um, but I'm actually just going to go back to the um, opening one here and I'm going to look at a different module here um, called Vibrance. Now the difference between Vibrance and the color correction here, color correction it, it increases the saturation to all the pixels. Uh, vibrance, it'll increase it, but it also reduces the lightness on the most saturated pixels. So I'm actually going to go all the way up to 100% here. So here's before, here's after. And what I really like about this is it's brought out some great saturation in that yellow and the red and so on, but the skin tones still look good. They don't look too red. So it saves me that extra step of going to the color zones. So when I'm doing portraits and working with people, um, I definitely like to check out the Vibrant slider. Um, that module works out quite well for me. Um, I'll zoom in on the face again here, and I'm just going to turn off the Vibrance. And just one more module to look at, because uh, it's dark table, there's, um, there's always a lot of options. Um, so we have Velvia here at the top, also in the color group. 
And this is supposed to be a bit more like a smart saturation. Instead of increasing the saturation of every pixel in the image, it's gonna find the pixels that already have a lot of saturation, like the red and the yellow and so on. It's gonna increase them and it'll put less emphasis on colors that don't have as much saturation, maybe the neutral area, the black and so on. So it's supposed to be a bit more of a smarter saturation. Um, so I'm just gonna turn on the default. It, it defaults at 25%. And when I turn that on, Okay, so it's done a really good job of adding some uh, saturation, but you also see the skin tones there. I'm actually going to zoom in on her face a little bit here. You see a section, second option here, mid-tone bias. And I'm going to turn that all the way to zero. And just look at her face here. So that's at zero. Keep an eye on the face, and I'll turn it up to 100. And it's gotten rid of a little bit of that red. So this module actually has um, a part built in that's trying to get make those skin tones natural with that mid-tone bias. So that's nice, but I still don't find it all that effective, or certainly not in this situation. So again, I'd have to go to that second step of going to the color zones and adding the natural skin tone, which isn't bad. You know, if you're happy with these results and it works out, hey, fine, you know, I don't mind that extra step. Um, what I do want to point out, generally for me, if I'm going to use that Velvia, I'll, I'll turn off the color zones here, I find it actually works quite well when I'm working with images in nature here. Um, cliffs, rocks, mountains, trees, and so on. If I come up to Velvia and turn that on, I'll even increase it a little bit here. I can just do a, a before and an after. Now I can actually end up getting pretty similar results in the color correction module too. But that's generally how I approach it. Uh, most of my images, I use the color correction module. If I'm working with portraits, I'm definitely going to take a look at the vibrance because I can get good results. And if I'm taking images, uh, you know, outside in nature, trees, forests, and so on, uh, Velvia works out pretty well for me. Um, but I recommend playing around with all those modules, just seeing what works best for you. And just realizing there's, uh, <laughs> like always in Darktable, a lot of different ways to do one thing. Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to my channel and click the like button below. If you'd like to learn more, please consider purchasing the open source photography course available at rileybrandt.com lessons. More information about the course and links to all my social media sites can be found in the description below.